big anniversary in China today. Sumi, today marks 40 years since uh, the country's economy opened up to the rest of the world, a move that ultimately turned China into a global economic powerhouse, second in GDP only to the United States. Now, in his speech at the Great Hall of the People in the Chinese capital Beijing, Chinese President Xi Jinping vowed to press ahead with economic reforms. But he also made clear that Beijing will not deviate from its one-party system or take orders from any other country. His comments come as the United States demands more transparency in trade relations with Beijing. Well, let's uh, just look back. I mean, China's transformative reform and opening up policy was launched on the 18th of December in 1978. That was the day when the country's Communist Party handed the reins of power to Deng Xiaoping, who subsequently turned away from the Soviet model of a plant economy and towards a more Western-friendly market economy. The move towards modernization brought results. 40 years ago, China's GDP hovered around only $150 billion annually. Nearly 20 years later, in 1997, it broke through the trillion dollar ceiling. And by last year, GDP had grown to over $12 trillion. China now swings a very heavy economic stick indeed, even though the freedom to do business there continues to face massive barriers. And in a moment, we'll talk a bit more about that. But first, a look at China's economic miracle. China's economy has grown faster than that of any other major country. Once poor and underdeveloped, the Asian giant has now grown into one of the most important export markets for manufacturers from all over the world, a true heavyweight in international trade. The architect who laid the foundations for its economic miracle, Deng Xiaoping, he became the country's leader in December of 1978 and subsequently left a lasting mark on the communist country's economy. Under him, private companies were allowed into China along with foreign investment. Deng also created special economic zones. In the four decades since, China has changed in dramatic ways. Millions of rural workers have streamed into the country's megacities. The gap between rich and poor has grown, as has overall prosperity. Many more people there now earn enough money to spend on more than just simple survival. I hope that uh, China will continue to insist on opening up because clearly the opening that we have seen in the last 40 years has been very beneficial for the Chinese people and for the Chinese economy. But hopes that a market economy would usher in more democracy and freedom have remained largely illusory. Foreign companies complain that the state still has too much influence over trade or that its oversight is even on the rise. And the country has also paid a high price for the last 40 years of rapid growth. It was purchased in many parts of China at the cost of the environment. And for more on China and its economic success, I'm joined by Clifford Coonan, who works in China as a correspondent, and he's with us now. So you know China pretty well, an amazing story there, but as we've just heard in that report towards the end, it comes at a price. What price are the Chinese paying? Well, I think one of the prices they're paying is, is very much in the, in the environment. The pollution has become a big issue in China, uh, particularly as people get more wealthy, uh, they worry about their children and uh, what impact the pollution could have. We also haven't seen much political change, given the huge economic change. It hasn't been matched by sort of a social change and change in the social fabric. So people are dealing with um, with uh, the sort of opposition there between the economic and the social. So what are we celebrating today? I mean, 40 years of opening up policy. How open is China? Well, compared to 40 years ago, when China was this inward-looking agrarian economy, uh, the change has been massive. Um, but um, what we're seeing now under Xi Jinping is that things are tightening up a bit. Um, they're definitely looking more inward and um, also standing up to America in this trade war. So um, there has been a huge amount of opening up and a massive uh, relief from poverty. But at the same time, the situation is becoming tighter. Now, that you're mentioning that, that, that trade war, trade row, I mean, the United States, of course, the world's number one economy, China follow, closely behind this. And in his speech, uh, she also said that uh, nobody's going to tell us how we do business. Yeah. Uh, are these just strong words? How strong is Beijing there? Well, Beijing has, has a big economic argument when it comes to dealing with the US. Um, and 
you know, the, the China has made U.S. goods uh, has made goods very cheap for U.S. consumers and and European consumers. Um, but at the same time, they also they need the goodwill of the U.S. in order to keep expanding the economy, um, particularly as they try to develop the economy into into different, more high tech sectors. Exactly. I mean, for 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 decades, China was uh, the world's sweatshop, and now it's there's the, a new transition going on after 40 years uh, towards a more high tech oriented economy. How's that working out? Well, when you visit places like Shenzhen in the south, you know, which is where the um, the 40 years of opening up um, began. Uh, you see these incredible tech hubs and these amazing companies. Um, so on one level, you're seeing this great shift from, from this sort of dirty manufacturing of, of, of 30 years ago to this high-tech element. But at the same time, the, the trade war is making it more difficult to, to keep this innovation and to keep this process of innovation going. And uh, just very briefly, Clifford, 40 years anniversary of opening up. A reason to celebrate? I think... Overall, I think it's a reason to celebrate. All right. Clifford Coonan there, uh, correspondent, long-year correspondent in China. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.